It's been a while since we've done this, so uh, let's get windy. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's video. I've got a little bit of something different for you today, actually, which I think should be pretty good fun. We're gonna be talking about uh, something I received as a gift in the post from a friend of mine, um, Dan at Reaper UK, that's Reaper Miniatures, same people who you usually see a link to in my description, decided to send me the Reaper Vex airbrush, which is a new venture from Reaper. They've never put their name to an airbrush before, as far as I know, and when I kind of found out that this was coming out to be honest I was pretty excited to try it. So we've spoken quite a bit about panel modulation recently. When I first did the tank video I kind of hinted at it in that and then I decided to labour over showing you a manual non-airbrush method for it. But what we've not actually really done at this point is done a detailed video on panel modulation with an airbrush the way it's normally done. So seeing as I just received this new airbrush that I really really like the look of and I want to give it a good test drive I figured what better way to do that than by showing you that more traditional normal approach to panel modulation by taking you through a step-by-step -step on painting a contempt of dreadnought using some lovely blues and trying to make it look pretty mostly with an airbrush before we get into all that though the first thing i want to do is actually take you over the beast itself show you what it looks like so i've got some little pictures let's drop to a montage and, and just take a quick look at what this beautiful beast is all about <laughs> I mean, it certainly looks the part, right? Let's see if it's got the bite to match its bark. Let's, let's modulate some panels with it. Okay, so the first thing I notice when I start spraying here is that the airflow through the brush is actually a lot better than what I'm used to. My brushes usually feel a bit more restricted than this. So with this in mind, I need to actually be mixing my paint a bit thicker than I normally do, which I've not done initially here. So to correct that, first of all, what I've done is just stepped back a bit and just backed off the pressure a little bit. And I'm just spraying in this dark blue just to make a start on establishing where all of my gradients are gonna go for these modulated panels. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do now is start strengthening up that dark blue, ready to start laying some gradients on top of it. We've already got a sort of overall dark blue kind of thing going on, but we need to start just pushing it a little bit harder. So it's actually the same color here, we're just reinforcing it. All I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the needle cover off so that I can see how close the needle is to the miniature at all times. This can just sometimes help with judging distance and how much pressure you're gonna need. It's absolutely not necessary to do so, but it's something I quite like to do sometimes. We're then gonna move a little bit closer to the miniature we're going to lower that pressure a little bit and we're just going to start to reinforce that blue very carefully angling the edges of the panels away from the cone of spray so that i don't get too much overspray so that i'm fairly controlled in what i'm doing Okay, so by this point in proceedings, I've started to figure out the consistency of paint that this brush wants me to be working with. So with that in mind, I can now start to map in some midtones. I need to be thinking here about that rule of opposites that we discussed in the last panel modulation video. So I want those dark to lights to be hitting each other where dark zones are connecting with light zones. With this in mind, I grab a nice cobalt blue, a nice big, rich, bold color, and I start to map in my midtones. Okay, so now I'm starting to be able to see those nice opposite gradients building in it's starting to look really sexy but I just want to kind of chill out for a second slow down give everything a minute to just dry naturally look at it think about it plan what my next move is so I'm going to use that time to treat myself to a nice chocolate caramel dessert mm -hmm. and now that my belly's full of sugar and I'm feeling happy and energized again I'm going to start to get some top highlights in now so again, we're continuing to keep the panels angled away from the spray cone so that we don't get any overspray going where we don't want it. And we're mixing a brighter blue this time and we're just gonna to start to be working more towards the edges to try and push that contrast more between the darkest parts of the panels and the lightest parts of the panels. Nice and simple. Right, now we're gonna really see what this brush is made of. For this next section, what I need to be doing is with a just off white, 
just sniping the corners and the very edges of those transition areas, the sharp parts, the parts that are, you know, going to be brightest. This is by far the hardest part of the whole process. It's the part that you're going to have to practice the most because you're going to need to be able to spray thin cones accurately to be able to do it. So it's going to take a bit of work to get to the point where you're confident to do this, but with a good airbrush that sprays accurately, it's definitely doable. It becomes comfortable quite quickly. And in this case, it went surprisingly well, which, you know, considering I'm pretty bad at it still at this point in my journey, is all right for me. So the only issue that I've got now is that after building up highlight after highlight after highlight after highlight, things are starting to just, they're getting a little bit washed out now, which is obviously not what we want. So what we're going to do now is grab some Talisar Blue Contrast Paint, load that into the airbrush. This is a good test of something really thin going through the brush. We're going to back the pressure down a bit. We're going to really step back because we haven't actually tried using the wide beam on the airbrush yet. And we're going to just essentially hit the entire miniature sort of uniformly. And that's just going to brighten everything back up towards blue, take some of the whiteness out of it all. Well, do you know what? That about brings me to the end of testing the brush. And I can't be honest, I actually rather like it. It's it's a lovely brush. Um... So I, I, I should be honest here, I'm not an expert. I'm not the best airbrusher in the world. I'm still learning, but what I would say is, as someone who owns a few airbrushes currently, uh, I've got, you know, some Iwata and some Harder and Steenbeck brushes, which are both very popular brush brands. I would say that this brush did everything that they do, and in terms of accuracy, in terms of being able to snipe, I actually think this brush is a little bit better than any of the other brushes that I own. So what I'm going to do is actually make it my main airbrush for a while and see how I do with it there. So I won't be using it for like undercoating and spraying varnishes and stuff like that because those are the kind of things that just fuck your airbrush up and you're constantly having to clean it. But what I'm going to do is every time I'm actually doing proper airbrushing where I need to, you know, have some accuracy, have some control, I'll make this my main airbrush and I'll see how things develop with it. But I think I'm on to a winner to be honest. It's a very good brush. So, I finished off that miniature, the Contempt to Dreadnought that I've been showing you. Let's take a look at that first of all, and you can judge kind of how that airbrush work has integrated into a final design. Sound good? with that i'm all right with that i really actually do you know what i actually really like how that looks i do i do enjoy it so quick bit of information about the brush because that's the kind of stuff you know that you're going to want to know if we're talking about a product um it has a very generous cup i think it's five mil or eight mil something like that it's there's quite a bit of space in that cup um it's pretty reasonably priced it's about £190 in the UK, $199 in the US, but that doesn't include tax in the US or VAT in the UK. So it, it's kind of priced about the same sort of rate as the rest of those kind of mid-range brushes, which is fine. Um, the trigger spring is nice and heavy, so it's got plenty of good feedback. Uh, it does dry tip, but... I just, I have a little trick for cleaning dry tip using a, a, a beauty blender, which is like a type of makeup sponge and bonking the microphone. And you can kind of get rid of the um, the dry tip pretty easily just by sort of rubbing a, a beauty blender on the end of it. So, you know, it was no no worse than any of my other brushes. And in fact, with the harder and Steenbeck ones, it's really difficult to get at the tip of the, of the needle. So it, in terms of comparing it to those brushes, maybe a little bit better in that sense. Um, all in all, it's a good brush, and I think the reason it's a really good brush is because it's manufactured by Badger. Badger airbrushes are, I mean, they've got years of pedigree. Um, they make the Steinol Res primers that I love, and that a lot of you, if you follow the methodology that I tend to show, are probably using. Um, if it's made by a brand with lots of pedigree like that, you know, I have confidence that it's going to last. I have confidence that if I need spares for it, I'll be able to get them. So I feel pretty good about it to start out with. Uh, also comes with a nice leather pouch, which made me very happy. I like things that come with accessories. I'm a 
bit of a magpie for accessories. So folks, if you like the video, whether that was for the talk about the new airbrush or whether that was for the Contempt to Dreadnought with nice blendy panels on it, well, maybe, you know, throw a like to show me that you liked the video. You can also subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be able to get updates of when I'm releasing new content. And if you want to support the creation of this content as I take it through to being my full-time job, I have a Patreon with tiers starting from as little as a dollar what's that 60 70 p a month and you can get access to a lovely little discord server where there's some very very nice hobbyists doing some very very nice hobby you can also at higher tiers get access to things like private tuition and little extra bonuses and stuff like that and you get a bunch of early access as well as getting access to the my big fat mouth vodcast in its video original format all sorts of cool stuff so check it out you might like it Anyway, I'm going to get myself out of here now. I hope you haven't been too put off by my heartless shilling, but I will see you in the next one, folks. Thanks for watching.